Joshua 1 and 8 and John 10 verse 9. Joshua 1 and 8. We just sing from the theme leveling up. Level up. Somebody say level up. Level up. Say it again. Level up. Level up. Now, how this got started was from our uh, leadership conference. It got started from that. And I have something else in mind. The Lord said, keep talking from that theme. Level up. Joshua 1 and 8. And then we're going to go to John. John, I, I try not to say a familiar passage of scripture because to me the word of God is never familiar. You read it once and you get one revelation and you read it at another time and you get another revelation. And some things I have read and I, I don't know about you, you know you read it 20 times and then you see it again. I never saw that. That's because God has opened your eyes to something in his word that is a revelation all right all right now if you got it i want you to say i got it, I got it. i'm kind of happy i'm not kind of i'm happy about this word this is gonna be good it's gonna be good joshua one and eight let's read just that verse in concert on the count of three. One, two, three. this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I, do, I want you to focus on the last two words of this verse. Somebody say good success. <laughs> for then, this is after the uh, colon, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have, now all say it together, good success. Somebody say it again, good success. Good. Uh, John 10, now in the New Testament. I'm going to start reading at verse number 9. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Now he telling you right there, you got to come through me in order to find pasture. Going to talk about that. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they is us. And that they might have it more abundantly. Can we read 10 together on the count of three? One, two, three. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Well, I'm excited because I'm getting ready to speak prophetically to this church. If you hear today, there's a prophetic word, and this prophecy is on me today. I sense it real strong. Uh, I want you to find a neighbor, look at him right in the face, and say, neighbor, get ready for abundant success. That's what we're going to talk about. I want you to look at the neighbor behind you. Find somebody that's right behind you. And say, neighbor, get ready for abundant success. Not just any kind of success, but abundant success. Let's pray. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for the multitude of your mercy and grace extended towards us today. You have given me this prophetic word for those that are in this room and for those that are listening by social media. You have talked to me this week a very pertinent word for the days ahead. We are going to square our shoulders. We're getting ready to have a Rehoboth. And we give you praise for it. Speak out of our mouth like fire in such a way that will birth forth transformation. And we give you praise. 
we give you glory, honor, and thanksgiving. I'm going to give you three, let's see, ten seconds to give God a crazy praise. Go. Come on. Open your mouth. You can do better than that. Open your mouth and give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, something gonna happen. Something gonna happen. Something gonna happen. Something gonna happen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You may be seated. And any time that you are talking about the book of Joshua, you are talking about crossing over. You're leaving the past and you're going towards your future. Your Egypt days, your wilderness days are now over. And now you're entering into your promise. And I like the word of the Lord when it says the promises of God are yes and in him amen. That means you can trust what he says it shall come to pass. Deuteronomy, I didn't read this, but Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day. Somebody say this day against you that I I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Somebody say choose life. That both and you and your seed may live. If you desire a good life, a triumphant life, a thriving life, an abundant life. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. It's going to be predicated on your decisions. It's going to be predicated on your choices. Ultimately, your decisions are going to decide what your destiny looks like. Now, I just said a whole lot right there. But your choices, your decisions are going to decide what your future, what your destiny looks like. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say to you. Decisions decide success. You want to write that down. Decisions, your decisions decide success. Some of your seasons have completely changed all because you said, I'm going to follow Jesus. You was on death row, but the moment that you said, I'm going to follow Jesus, everything changed, and now you are on the narrow road or straight street. Now you're living the blessed life, all because you said, I'm going to follow Jesus. I like the song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No time turning back no turning back I may have some ups I may have some downs I may have some situations but I'm not backsliding I'm not going back there because the world didn't have much to give me I party for a little while but it was just for a season and then I ended up in a whole lot of pain but one thing I love about Jesus when you get on the Holy Ghost side when you go get on Jesus side even when you go through a struggle a test a dilemma you will find yourself finding joy unspeakable and full of the morning glory you will find yourself having peace that surpasses all understanding somebody show hallelujah, hallelujah. listen in regards to your decisions you are what you have decided to become Oh, I just said a whole lot right there. You are what you have decided to become. Well, I'm just this way. No, I let me help you. You have made a choice, a decision to be the way you are. Because people change every single day. They change for this. They change for that. They make decisions to move across the country. They make decisions to change their hair. They was a blonde. Now they're a brunette. They decided they're going to be this way. Way. They decide they go. It's all in the mind. And wherever you are in life, pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say because this is going to be a little heavy. Wherever you are in your life right now, your decisions have put you there. Wherever you are in your life right now, your decisions have put 
put you there. And if you are still blaming a person, a place, or thing for where you are, that means you haven't gone deep enough to assume responsibility for where you are. It doesn't matter what happened uh, when you was 5 and 10 and 15. Ultimately, your decisions, sometimes it was because you didn't have enough information is the reason why. The Bible says it like this, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Maybe you didn't have the knowledge or the, even the know-how to seek for the knowledge, but your choice Choices, your decisions put you are where you are right now. And one thing I, I hate about blaming, blaming keeps you from making responsible decisions. Y'all quiet on that. But as long as you blaming, you are not going to make responsible choices, responsible decisions. Well, brother preacher, how do I make better choices, better decisions? I'm glad you asked. Proverbs, the third chapter, five and six says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Path. If you want to make better choices and stop going through the same old, same old, go to God first, opposed to going to him last. Take all of your trouble, all of your situations, all of your circumstances. The word of God says it like this. Cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. And then James 1 and 5 challenges us a little bit better and said, ask God for wisdom wisdom ask God for wisdom he that lacks wisdom let him ask of God that gives liberally he said if you come to me and ask me for wisdom I'm here to give it to you freely and liberally you can have as much wisdom as you need for whatever that you are experiencing right now so what I do when I pray I say father crown my head with wisdom knowledge and understanding I'm gonna say it again I say father crown my head with wisdom I don't know I want to make a better choice crown my head with knowledge I got to seek knowledge in order to do what I need to do and understanding somebody say help me Lord so wisdom is yours for the asking but I want to give you a warning wonderful people if you're asking and you're double minded you're not going to receive anything from God one minute you're this way one minute you're that way you're just as fickle as water God says ask me and be stable with what you're asking oh Lord somebody say help me Lord God doesn't want us to be double-minded. And he also don't want us to make, I, I want to challenge you guys in decision-making. Don't make decisions when you're not sure. Just wait. Oh, God, I hope I'm helping somebody right now. Don't make decisions when you're not sure. Well, I don't know. I'm in doubt. I'm thinking about it. Don't make a decision right there. Stop right there and wait for the answer. Don't make a knee-jerking decision that's going to come back to haunt you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Then don't make decisions when you're angry. Calm yourself down before you make the wrong one. Look right in your neighbor's face and say, don't make a decision when you mad and upset and ready to scratch somebody's eyeballs out. Because the moment that you do, it's going to come back to haunt you. Wait on the Lord. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Then number three, don't make decisions when you tired and burned out and fatigued. Rest yourself. Go to bed. Get you some sleep. And then in the morning, make the decision. All right? I just said a whole lot right there because I'm giving this to you prophetically. Number one, don't make decisions when you're not sure. Number two, don't make decisions when you're angry. And number three, don't make decisions when you're tired. Y'all got that? Good. Let's keep going. How bad do you want to be successful? 
Let me see your hands. Have a successful, thriving, productive life. Jesus said it like this. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The whole reason why he came is so you can experience abundant life. Not a depressed life. Not a sad life. Not I'm feeling sorry for myself. Not generational curses. He wants you to experience abundant life. That's why he came. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. And if it's going on good in heaven, it should be going on good right here on earth for you. Jesus said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. So why are you sad? Why are you depressed? You said you were saved. You said you were sanctified. Why are you crying every other day? That's not God. That's the thief that is robbing you of your peace. Oh, Lord, Jesus, help us today. Jesus said, I come to give you life. Somebody say life. life. He wants you to have an abundance of good things. Not just today, every day. I don't care what the world is doing. You're supposed to have peace in your life. You're supposed to have good things in your life. Everybody else is, is, is tossing and turning in their bed, but you should be snoring. You got to learn how to go to sleep right in the devil's face and say, God got my back and he got me while I'm asleep. I'm okay. It is important, wonderful people. To have a good life, you need this. Check it out. You may want to write this down. Focus thought. Focus thought. And the issue is most men fail because of broken focus. Uh oh, I better say that again. Most men fail because of broken focus. You were doing real good for 30 days. You were focused. And I'm telling you, you was at the gym and you had it going on real good for 30 days. And then you slipped up at 2 o'clock with the banana pudding and the ice cream. And you broke it. And now you're no longer disciplined. It only took one time. But if you just focus, you can get some stuff done. You got to focus on getting them dishes clean. Why y'all looking at me so funny? You got to focus on cleaning up that room. You got to be disciplined to do it. Why y'all looking at me like I'm talking foreign? Somebody say, you talking to me, preacher. You need to <laughs> you need to focus your thoughts so you can make good choices, good decisions. It's not that you're not saved. You have not learned how to make good decisions. And it keeps setting you back. You have not learned how to make good choices. And it requires discipline. Somebody say discipline. I know we don't like that word, but it's, this is good. This type of teaching you need. Okay, because you've been shouting and you've been falling out, but you haven't been making good choices. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. It requires discipline over your mind and your emotions. Somebody say, Lord, help me in my mind. Help me with my emotions. My emotions are all over the place. I wake up in the morning good and by 12 o'clock I'm crying. What you crying about? I don't even know what I'm crying about. That's demonic. You need to lay hands on yourself and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you because you have no business crying and you don't know what you're crying about. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm a kingdom people. I'm a kingdom person. I like Romans 14, 17. I'm just teaching, but I'm still talking prophetically. I hope you're catching that. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of me eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Check out the three things that God wants you to have. He wants you to have righteousness. He wants you to have peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is for kingdom people. I don't feel good. I, don't, I just don't understand what's going on in my life. Kingdom people. The kingdom is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what you got to settle in. The fact is you don't read what the word says and then the enemy comes to haunt you and you don't have no word to fight in the spirit realm. And so he just keeps coming and coming and Wearing your brain right on out, but you don't use the word to fight back. 
Oh God, somebody say help me Lord. Lord. Check out something that I want to introduce. I didn't read this and it has something to do with the unjust steward. In Luke 16 chapter, where Jesus is commending, can you imagine? He's commending an unjust steward for his focus and tenacity in handling business affairs. And he made an interesting conclusion. I'm about to get on your nerves today. He says, the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Jesus said that. Can you imagine that this same Jesus that came through the volume of the book through 42 generations to save us says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Why would Jesus say that? What can we learn from this unjust steward? Well, first of all, he's not putting this unjust steward in our face so we can uh, uh, follow examples of what he's doing he's trying to show something to the people of God about worldly men and their perseverance and tenacity we are sometimes so lazy and we proclaiming Jesus and the world is out there with tenacity and perseverance getting things done isn't it amazing? I heard it read. I heard it said like this, and I was like almost shocked when I heard it. That one sinner can get more done than ten thousand Christians that are having an argument about theology, all because they have perseverance, they have tenacity, they are operating by the laws and making sure they get things done. Pay attention to the ant, you sluggard. In other words, the proverb is saying, you are lazy. The reason why you are the way you are where you are is because you insist on doing things the way you want to do it. And it's coming back to hunt you with your brilliant genius self. You know you should be much further than where you are right now. You are crying and upset because everybody in your community is doing more than you. See, y'all, I'm prophesying now, and y'all looking at me funny. But the truth of the matter, everybody is doing more. I'm talking about worldly men. They out there getting stuff done, and you feeling sorry for yourself, and you got Jesus. Something is wrong with this picture. I shouldn't have to keep laying hands on you for you to get it. You got to make a decision. Do you want to have good success? Well, it's yours for the asking, but if you just keep sitting there waiting for somebody to give you something, you're not going to have nothing. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you my harvest. Oh, Lord. I'm not giving. I've been up. I got up at 5 o'clock. I got up at 6 o'clock. I got up at 7 o'clock. I did the work. What are you doing? It's going to require work. Nobody's handing out anything to you. I was at the gas station the other day, and this man just started asking for money. And the, the lady over there, she was pumping her gas. She made me laugh. She said, yeah, there's nothing for free out here. Why didn't you ask to pump my gas? She said, and she got in his face. She said, you just standing out here doing nothing. You don't want to do nothing. You don't want, you just want everybody money. Nothing is for free. And we're talking about we're kingdom people. We should be demonstrating what that looks like. How many books do you read? Do you have a library at home? Do your children see you reading? You mean to tell me uh, it, it, it's just enough for you to put $60, $60 in the gas tank and you won't invest $60 into your mind? There are free magazines. You won't even read them for the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding. There's books everywhere. What type of knowledge are you getting? get that in I read sometimes I don't like reading and that's why you are you keep going back 
and going back or you're not going forward because you won't seek the information. The information is there, but you won't read. Do me a favor and, and, and slap your neighbor upside the head and say, it's time for you to read. I mean, knock them right in the head because it's that head that's been getting, slap them. I mean, across the face, slap them. You need to read. Some of y'all saying, don't you slap me. Don't you, don't you lay your hands on me because it's going to be a problem up in here, up in here. But that's the problem. You need to slap yourself or do something because time is passing you by. It is suggested that one sinner can get more done. One sinner can get more done than 10,000 Christians. Because we insist on doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Let this be the year. Somebody say, let this be the year. I'm going to make a change. Let this be the year. I'm going to do a turnaround. I'm going to eliminate, check it out, all unnecessary chatter and being in other people's business. You are too much in other folks' stuff. All on Instagram, on Facebook, and you haven't read a book. You haven't even read the Bible. There are people that put in hours of study you come to church five minutes well pastor said read that scripture and you takes your five minutes just to find it why is that and you kingdom people you the salt of the earth you the light of the world how that's a sea law moment in other words, according to the Apostle Paul, we are to be an example to the believer, to the world, how we are supposed to do, how we're supposed to get things done. We should be in the forefront, not in the back. We should not be mimicking the world to get stuff done. We have the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of us, and we don't have any wisdom. We don't have any knowledge. We don't have any understanding. Nobody shouting today. Okay. So, how many want to be successful? What are the obstacles to an abundant success? Uh-oh, I'm about to get into something now. Y'all ready? Get your pen and paper because I'm giving you stuff. I'm speaking prophetically today. Number one, an uncommitted heart. Uncommitted heart. How much could you get done if you just made up your mind and would be committed? You start on something and let it go. You start on this. You got 10,000 things on the fire. And none of it's done. You start, oh, I'm going to be a hair beautician. That didn't work out. Oh, child, I'm going to I'm I'm do taxes. That didn't work out. Oh, child, I'm going I'm to be a paralegal. Oh. Next thing you know, you done been five things in five years, and nothing has gotten done. Uncommitted heart. The only reason why you're not further along is because you refuse to commit. Commitment attracts people and favorable opportunities. If you just made up your mind and became committed, I wonder how much further you would be if you would be a committed Christian. One minute you're unsaved, next minute you're saved. The next minute I don't know. And you just keep going back and forth. And the Bible says you're lukewarm. And when you're lukewarm, you get spewed out of the mouth. You don't qualify for kingdom benefits being lukewarm. Ooh, I, I, that said something right there. Y'all better write that down. I got to listen to the tape. You don't qualify for kingdom benefits being lukewarm. You got to make a decision. You have to become committed. And the reason.
reason why you're not further along and you depressed and you depending on the government is because you refuse to commit. It's tight, but it's right. And you can't get this by being double-minded. The reason why you are in standstill, Lodibar, the wilderness, Egypt, is because you double-minded. Boy, the Holy Ghost preaching through me today. Good God from glory. Woo, none of this stuff on the notes. Let me tell you. God said, I'm challenging you today to be committed. Look at your neighbor and say, level up. Not level down. Not stay in the same place. He said, I want you to come up. I know what's going on with you based off your mouth. Oh, Lord. So, number two. What's keeping you from abundant success? An unbridled tongue. An unbridled tongue. You know you got a problem with it. You said you was gonna do better. You said it. You told them and us and yourself, oh, and my mouth just gets me in a whole lot of trouble. My mouth, child, I've gotta do better. I gotta do better. And, and, and there you are in the faith line again because you done cussed out your boss. And you want me to pray for you because you don't have no temperance over your mouth. Now, why ain't nobody shouting? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for some giggies. Check out what the Bible says. Oh, this is going to hurt your feelings. James 1 and 26. Write it down. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, he deceives his own heart. And this man's religion is in vain. So all your shouting, all your falling out means nothing because you have no temperance over the tongue. The Bible says even when a fool keeps his tongue. Can you imagine? A fool gets kudos in the Bible for knowing how to shut his mouth. Even when a fool keeps his tongue, he's considered wise and esteemed a man of understanding when he just knows how to shut up. Now, some of y'all looking at me mighty funny. But when I get through with you today, you're going to have somebody say abundant success. Hey, yo, your words are opening doors or they're closing them. Your words are opening doors or they're closing them. And you doing it to yourself. God said, I'm going to bless you in the city and in the field. And you went and went in the city. And now you and you getting ready to have the interview. Y'all going to give me the job. Get out of here. No. You got to know two languages. How to speak Ebonics when you at home with your family. And then when you get to the interview, how to speak the king's English. Oh, I just helped you right there. You got to know when and where. The problem is you don't know when and where. And there you are speaking Ebonics in front of somebody that's going to hire you or open the door for you. I just say what I want to. That's why you ain't got nothing. Because you just say what you want to. You have no temperance over your mouth. And you deceiving yourself by thinking you sanctified and holy. The Bible says your religion is in vain. Because you have no control over your tongue. Put your hand on your mouth and let's say, Lord, sanctify my mouth. I mean, clean it out with full of soap. It needs to be saved. Everything saved but my mouth. I'm still cussing. I'm still letting everybody have it. I'm still arguing. I'm saying too much. And all of it's coming back to haunt you. At this juncture, you're supposed to be speaking not just kingdom language, but having a tongue of a ready rider. <laughs> Season with grace. I love it. Preach with me. <laughs> Somebody say kingdom. kingdom. Now ask your neighbor, is your mouth getting you in trouble? And tell them the truth. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah, yeah. My mouth been getting me into trouble. I don't know how to shut it. 
Yes, it's showing up in my belly. It's showing up in my finances. It's showing up in my relationships. It's showing up in my marriage. My mouth need to be sanctified. My tongue need to be holy. Nobody, nobody, nobody want to be my friend because you don't have control over your mouth. You tell everybody's business. Don't nobody want to be a friend to you because they can't trust you. You tell everybody's business. You don't have control over your tongue. Come on here. <laughs> Don't nobody want to be around me. Don't, there's a reason. It's called, it's in between. It's right here. It's, it's, this, it's this thing right between your teeth. <laughs> and it's messing you up. And you insist. And then you come up here and you want me to pray for you. I need to knock you out. Mama said knock you out. Because you don't have control over that mouth. If you don't do anything this year, get some control of that tongue. Oh, Lord Jesus. I had to work on that a little bit. I have some, much more I can say about that. We got to go. We got to move on. I said 45 minutes. It's almost time to go. Number three. This is this, this a good one. Unpaid vows. Ecclesiastes 5, 4 through 5 says, When you make a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he have no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. But it is better. But better is it that you should have not vow and that you should vow and not pay. Say, it's better for you not to give a vow than not to pay it. So what is an example of that? God, if you deliver me and get me out of this. I'm going to come to, I'm going to be at church every Sunday, every time the door is open. If you just heal my body, if you just bring my, my husband home, I'm going to be, I'm going to get in the ministry. I'm going to dedicate myself. I'm going to get myself together. And you did it for 30 days. Why y'all looking at me funny? Because some of y'all sitting in here done made some vows to God and God's waiting on you to pay it. Yeah. And you wondering why you not moving forward because you stood up there and said, God, if you just get me out of this, I messed up all my bills and I need you to just fix it because I was at the mall and I spent all my money on them shoes and dresses. I did it to myself. But if you get me out of this, I promise I won't do it no more and 60 days later you back at the mall I'm sorry Amazon <laughs> oh child look at that and now you got boxes sitting on the porch Praying and rebuking devils that nobody steal the boxes. Because you done been on Amazon. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Ooh, child, I got the way. I'm getting ready for the child. They said it's the 10th year anniversary. And you've been looking for them shoes. <laughs> Pay your vows. If you said it, it's better for you not to say it. Then to go ahead and say it to God. See, we make God too common. As if he's one of us, you know, but my word said that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We serve a God that can erase you and create somebody that looks just like you. But you are insisting on saying these things to manipulate God as if he's a fool. Do you not know he know your thoughts are far off? He know what you're going to do. He know what you're not going to do while you up there. If you just get me out of this. The reason why he haven't answered you because he know you. And he know you're not going to do right. He waiting for you to grow up. Tap your name on the shoulder and say it's time for you to grow up. You're 70 years old. You're still acting like you're 13. It's time for you to grow up. 
Okay, what's number four? Mm -hmm. Number four, unwise associations. This is an obstacle to your abundant success. Unwise associations have destroyed thousands that have awesome potential. But you just insist on being around people that are going nowhere, talking about nothing. Everything is shallow. Everything is, I'm going to, child, did you hear? Child, did you know? You are around the wrong people. And I know you didn't heard it before, but I'm as a prophet, I'm coming to remind you that those associations are going to take you to hell. And you're going to need God to really deliver you. These people you are around will hurt you. They will deceive you. They will manipulate you and tell their mama they did it. It's time for you to start asking, who am I around? Do you know? Wait, 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 wait. I just heard a rapper, a rapper that was cussing on Instagram. And he said, this is where the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. He said, well, I don't feel as since the blessings coming from God. This is how he talking. I started checking my associations. This is what the rapper said. He said, because there's supposed to be a flow of blessings coming into my life. I started checking my associations. Some of you all got Jonah on your boat. They disobedient. They doing whatever they want to do. And God said, you need to cast them off. I don't think, don't feel sorry for them. That's between them and God. You need to cast them off your boat. That's why you ain't got no peace at home. Because they have no business in your house. You need to cast them out. Oh, God. See, y'all, I, I teach a different gospel. Why you put them out the church? Because the Bible said, cast out the scorner, strife, contention, and reproach shall cease. You got to get up out of here. You are causing confusion, and you are on assignment from hell. And I know you a witch. Get out of here. And you tell them I said. Don't play that. You got to get up out of here. Peace, baby. With your foul spirit, peace, baby. Get up out my church. There's some folk in here that's seeking God, that want to know God for real. And you causing confusion. You sowing seeds of discord. Oh, you just need to have compassion. I'll have compassion you on you later when you get your head together. Because sometimes you will lay hands on people and cast out a demon. And here comes eight more demons out of the... Oh, God, y'all don't want it. So you got to wait till folks is ready. Because some of y'all dealing with a legion of demons that you, because you cast out one and they wasn't ready. And they just keep causing confusion in the house. Keep causing. The Bible says he that walks with wise men shall be wise. But a, conf a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If you want to be wise, be around wise people. Amen. Change your associations. Change the people that you're around. If you want to be wise, get with some wise people. I start going to conferences with wise people and people that know more than me. That can teach me something. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need to change groups. If you're the smartest person in your group and you can't learn nothing from now, you need to change your associations, baby. You need to be around some people that's going to challenge you to come up, challenge you on your thinking. One of my homies, been my friend for 40 years now, he, he, he works for a bank. And when we talk, we're talking way up here. We're coming up with new words. We, we, I mean, we all in the thesaurus. Oh, what did you say? What did that mean? Because we talking, we talking up here. We leveling up. We we challenge each other to think outside the box. Oh, yo, man, you know, yeah, man, we got to get up with that girl. You talking too early? You a Christian man? Change the way you speak. Change what you wear, baby. Because folks will respect you based off of what you got on. Not when you're walking around like this. <laughs> you can barely walk down the street because you sagging. You looks like a fool. <laughs> a buffoon. 
or you got on booty shorts. <laughs> Why y'all looking at me like I'm talking some crazy language? Come on, come on. You're, you're looking at me like I'm talking crazy, but I'm not talking. I got to get in there real good so you can understand what I'm talking about. And you're wondering why you keep attracting the dogs. Look at how you dressed. Your nails is from here to here. Your hair is out here. Okay, I'm coming off that. Leave me alone. Somebody, <laughs> somebody say abundant success. I'm five minutes over. I got to go. I got to go. Jesus makes, it, makes a contrast. I'm about to get ready, Jamari. I'm, 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 we're going to wrap this up and go on out. Jesus makes the contrast what a thief come to do and what he come to do. Uh -huh. Jesus said, a thief is coming to kill, uh -huh. to steal, uh -huh. and destroy. Uh -huh. He tell me what the thief going to do now. And let me tell you something about the thief. He's not just, he coming to steal your peace. Yes. He coming to steal your love. He coming to steal not just material goods. He, he wants your sense of security. But Jesus said, I'm coming. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you life and that more abundantly. God told me to prophesy to you today. He said, in the days ahead. He said, you getting ready to experience. Now, this might not be for everybody because some folks still got to grow up. You're getting ready to experience abundant success in every area of your life, relationally, financially, psychologically, emotionally, your career. You are getting ready to experience abundant success. It's getting ready to be a change, a shift. Abundant success is getting ready to hit your life. Because you're going to make a decision that I'm going for abundance. I prophesy to you today that you have gone around this mountain long enough. I prophesy the doors are getting ready to be open that no man can shut. And doors are going to be shut that no man can open. I prophesy to you today that an abundance of peace is going to hit your house. Just give me something. I prophesy to you today that you're going to the next level of joy. You've been at this level. You're getting ready to level up to the next level of joy. I prophesy and speak into your life that thus saith the Spirit of the Lord that you're coming into a season where you will not be in want and need. I don't know who it is that may be in here, it may be on social media, but that's going to be such a shift in your life because you're going to make the decision that I am no longer going to stay, check it out, in this area to satisfy I want to say it as I'm hearing it in my spirit I'm not going to stay in this area to satisfy those that don't want to see me succeed there are those that don't want to see you succeed and you insist out of guilt of staying in that area staying in that same place God says unto you, it's going to shift. It's going to shift. Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands in this place. As I prophesy over your life, abundance of good. The Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8, you're going to have good success. Not just success good success that means you're gonna live a life 
where you are blessed. I normally don't preach and talk like this, but this is the way I sense to go today. You can't level up and you don't receive the greater blessing. You can't level up and stay in the same place. I prophesy to you that good success is going to include your health. Those that are dealing with sickness of any kind, lift your hands all the way up. I say, Father, I receive your healing in my life today. Good success. Because I can't experience abundance, abundance and I'm sick. I can't come into my promised land and I'm sick. I can't be a preacher, a teacher, an evangelist and I'm sick. Lay hands on whatever is ailing you right now. And in the name of Jesus, I speak directly towards the illness. And I say, be thou healed. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. I speak healing to your mind from past trauma and trauma bonds and ungodly soul ties of people that you connected with and it seems like you can't shake them and they continuously keep showing up in your mind, in your atmosphere, in your association. I break the chain that keeps dragging you back to a place that you have already left by the anointing of God. That chain of the past is broken. That ungodly soul tie no longer belongs in your life I decree and declare that it is broken it is over with you can see clearly you can be better you can do better hallelujah I decree and declare that you will not go around the same mountain I decree and declare that you will make better choices better decisions I decree and declare that you are coming out with your hands held up that you surrender in the past I decree and declare that you will be blessed in the city and in the field and in the storehouse and the fruit of your body will be blessed I decree and declare that your children your legacy will be blessed I decree and declare that you will live in inheritance for your children's children. I decree and declare that your children are coming off the streets, that your children are being saved and healed and delivered and set free. I decree and declare that that the seductive spirit is leaving your life. I decree and declare that poverty that's been on your generation, been in your family for 60 generations is being bound and broken you are blessed you are no longer holding on to poverty poverty be gone poor be gone you are blessed today blessed in the city i decree and declare that you coming out to surround us and the community and you're going higher you're going higher you're about to change change relationships change restaurants you're getting ready to change food you're getting ready to change in every area of your life. Somebody shall change. I decree and declare that restoration life is being restored. For God said, I will restore it to you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has, <laughs> has eaten up. Restoration. Restoration. Be restored. Be revived. Be renewed. Be revived. In the name of Jesus. Oh! Wait. This is how I'm going to close it. Jesus said if you want it, he said in John 10, verse 9, he says, I am the door. If you come through me, you'll find good pastures. That takes me to Psalm 23. I'm done and I'm getting ready to get out of here. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Look at yourself and say, I'm not going to want. 
I'm not going to want for nothing because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm going to lean on Jesus' name. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. Somebody say yes. He's my shepherd, my Jehovah Roe, my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to live. I speak life. You shall live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. Surely I'm done. I got to go. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow you. Not just today, but goodness and mercy going to follow you in 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, 2031, 2032, 2033, 2044. It's following me everywhere I go. When I go to Walmart, goodness and mercy following me when I go into the house goodness and mercy following me when I lay my head down goodness and mercy is following me it's right there surely goodness and mercy get ready to live wait Victor and Tamar, that house y'all been looking at. Ooh, I can love the loot. Like, ooh, that house right there. That's the one you're going to live in. Y'all yeah. looking at me funny. That car you want to drive, that real one, go lay hands on it. It's yours. Lift your hands. I speak over your life. That debt is getting ready to be canceled. Half of the heaviness you have is because of the debt you have. God says, I'm going to cancel the debt, but you can't hold debt over nobody else's head. Uh oh, I just said something. Look at your neighbor and say, My debt going to be canceled. Oh! My debt don't be canceled. You know you messed it up. You know your credit is messed up, but God said, I'm going to show you goodness and mercy, and I'm going to cancel the debt. Somebody needs to be shouting on that. That means your student loan. Somebody better be running on that one. President Biden tried to help us out, but that didn't work. So God said, I'm going to step in supernaturally, and I'm going to cancel the debt. And when it happens, I want you to come up in here. Wait. Sister, Sister Tamar, we're going home. Run down here and tell church what happened to you last week. Hurry up. Come on. Run down here and tell, tell the church. Y'all know I was preaching on the Holy Ghost last week, right? Hold on. So, so um, last Sunday, I want to say this first before I get to where I'm going. Um, before I met my husband, um, there was an apartment that I used to stay in. I, I love to worship the Lord. When you worship, you, I mean, you feel so many amazing things. But when I used to worship, the Holy Spirit used to try to come over, over me to make me um, speak in tongues. But when I started to speak in tongues, I, I feared. I, I got scared. 
So I was wondering why was I getting scared. So I, I did it numerous times, but Sunday I literally surrendered and I asked Lord not to allow me to get scared. And I spoke in tongues and I felt I feel so awesome about it. It's an awesome feeling. <laughs> I told you the Holy Ghost was in the room. And ye shall receive the Holy Ghost with fire. Woo. Well, go ahead, Elder. Go ahead and praise him. <laughs> I dare somebody to join them. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. It's gonna come with power, dunamis power, exousia power. Yes, come on. Oh! If you're ready for abundant success, put the devil up on your feet and say, guess what? This was gonna happen to me. I'm gonna be laughing all the way to the bank. I'm gonna be laughing all the way to the bank. Investments, CDs, IRAs, it's coming your way. Investments, CDs, savings account, money coming to you. Money coming to you. Money coming to you. Money coming to you. Money, 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 money is coming to this church, to this church, to this church, to this church, to this. Oh, all right. 